Vogue. And this is a weird post because this seems like um, Bella Hadid decided it was a good idea to go on social media and basically talk about her anxiety and whatnot, right? Um, and depression and basically talk about and basically share pictures of herself crying um, uh, via her selfie camera on her phone looking incredibly cute still, which is, you know, something that you have to kind of um, wrangle your head with, right? In her deepest, dark, in her deepest darkest moments, she still looks hotter than 99% of people out there in the world, right? It's something frustrating, but it is what it is, isn't it? We're all blessed with um, the gift of having flawless looks and whatnot. And a really slender body to fit into sample size clothing, which I'd love to. I'd absolutely love it. But yeah, we, we continue. So this is a courtesy of Vogue. It says social media is not real. Bella Hadid opens up about her anxiety and depression. And I have some thoughts about this. Of course, I have some thoughts. So this is a post courtesy of Instagram. There's a clip here of Willow Smith, I guess, talking about something to do with anxiety and the depression. Um, obviously, Bella Hadid responds to that or it resonates with her in some way. She uploads these pictures of her looking gorgeous, sobbing into her camera, right? Many, many pictures of her crying, which is weird to have pictures of you on your camera roll, of you sobbing like this anyway. It's very, very strange. Um, <laughs> well, that's her on an IV drip, right? Is that her getting IV drips or something? I don't know. So it, the caption says the following that feeling of thinking you're not good enough or being insecure about your art is natural but some same same time it feels like uh it feels like it's taught all humans are different every single human has something so special and unique to offer and people forget that everyone is basically feeling the same way lost confused not really sure why they're here um the anxiety like everyone else is feeling that and trying to cover it up is some in some way we're gonna come together in our flaws we're gonna come together in our flaws and our insecurities and our joy in our happiness and accept it uh it's always beautiful and natural again i don't know just words that don't make any sense this is pretty much every day every night for a few years now she starts off by saying social media is not real for anyone struggling please remember that sometimes all you'll go hear is that you're not alone so from time to time so from me to you you're not alone i love you i see you and i hear you <laughs> what self up and mental illness chemical balance is not linear and it's almost like a flowing roller coaster of obstacles it has its ups and downs and side to sides but i want you to know there's always light in the tunnel and the roller coaster always comes to a complete stop at some point there's always room for it to start up again but for me it's always been nice to know that even if it's a few days weeks or months it does get better to some extent even for a moment it took me a long time to get that in my head, but I've had enough breakdowns and burnouts to know this. If you work hard enough on yourself, spending time alone to understand your traumas, triggers, joys, and routine, you'll always be able to understand and learn more about your pain, how to handle it, which is all you can ask for yourself. Anyways, not sure why, but it feels harder and harder not to share my truth on here. Thank you for seeing me and thank you for listening. I love you. <sighs> what a bunch of bullshit. Wait, you know what, right? This is clearly again I, i've said this many a times but whenever people post many many self it's like whenever you go on someone's instagram page and they have a whole grid full of them just looking into a camera like this selfie pictures like you know jared pk has got an instagram page that basically it's quite famous for him taking weird awkward kind of boomer selfies of himself especially when it comes to females in my opinion or maybe maybe if it came come to males but regardless of who it is in my opinion it's always been a form of mental illness wanting to take that many pictures of yourself and upload them onto your instagram feed and just have a cascading grid full of images of yourself staring into the camera at various angles usually it's not various angles because we all know our best angles and we usually take the same picture again and again in different guises to show off our best features whether it's our face our neck our lips whatever it may be we all have our angles so they're usually not that different pictures they, they're usually not that different they're usually all the same so you got all these weird same pictures of yourself no pictures of friends or places that you go or things that you're interested in whatever it's just all pictures of you that is a form of mental illness secondly people who take pictures of themselves crying into a camera that is also something that's incredibly scary in my opinion to think of somebody who's going through a really destructive um emotionally draining uh mentally debilitating situation and the first thing that they want to do is record themselves crying in that moment that to me is the most bizarre thing i've ever seen in my life it's like taking a selfie picture of yourself at a funeral of your best friend or something to show people that you're crying at your best friend's funeral like that is how nuts that is to me it doesn't make any sense whatsoever and then the second part or the third part of it i would say is that this is clearly in my opinion from what i can see especially you know again not knowing anything about these people but i'll assume if you're a successful incredibly well-known incredibly attractive 
incredibly rich supermodel there's definitely going to be a point a part of you that feels like the people around you aren't really your real friends they don't really know you too well do they are they really there for you for who you are or are they there for you because of the clout that they can kind of extract from you the rub they can get from standing next to you um the association with you the follows the likes all this sort of stuff that's probably going to be something that's going to be very permanent in your head and the older you get in that industry the more you start to realize that you're not evergreen that there's always a younger hotter tighter looking girl again crass to say but that is a basically the the, the the crux of it when it comes to fashion it's obviously shallow it's obviously superficial there's always somebody else going to come after after you is going to eventually replace you and your time in the sun will be kind of you know uh, will kind of get washed away in the flipping you know whatever tides of the ocean or whatnot right no one will give a shit about your time so i'm sure that is something that is quite hard to deal with because at the very moment or at that very moment there are parts of you that feel like you are the center of the world right you are basically the living heartbeat of fashion when you walk everyone kind of takes attention right when you're on the runways like oh wow she's back on the runway again wow look at this editorial look at that and it feels like you're the most important person in the world but then you start to think am i the most important person in the world no you're not clearly you're not because you don't have any real friends around you don't have people that actually love you for who you are and again it's very difficult to find them i've always said the hardest thing to find when you're an actual adult not when you're a child when you're an actual adult and you have bills to pay and you actually have a life is friends it's difficult to find friends which is why a lot of people latch onto and hold onto very tightly friends that they kind of encounter in their workspace because you know it's a good place to actually find friends because you're spending eight hours a day with these people, especially post pre pandemic when you're in the office all the time. You're maybe going out with drinks to them after work, so that's even more time increased. So sometimes you're spending more time with people at work than you do with your actual spouse or with your actual partner or whatnot. So those are really the greatest times that you can actually meet new friends or maybe from in classes or what. Da, 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 da. But just imagine how lonely and how kind of isolating it must be to be somebody of notoriety in the in the aspect of a better hadith also you have to happen to be a very attractive girl which obviously could then isolate you more because i would imagine especially when it comes to girl and girl relationships you are quite limited in the girls you can hang out with because not all girls would want to hang out with you because again you're a supermodel it is what it is um your schedule probably doesn't permit you to have relationships that are just quote unquote normal because you're all over the world in different places moving around um maybe relationships are pretty hard to deal with you may be able to deal with a specific type of person so all those things i think will contribute to you having anxiety or whatnot feeling bad or whatnot but again most of it's because you don't have any real relationships in your life it's less about the trials and tribulations of the industry you're in because a part of me also thinks to myself like I kind of enjoyed it I kind of liked it when people who were you know who were in very privileged positions just knew that they were privileged. I just kind of I wouldn't say I, I enjoyed it when people in privileged positions didn't try and pretend like they had normal people issues to seem normal but then it reminds me of this picture of Brooklyn Beckham is it Brooklyn Beckham I think Brooklyn Beckham he's wearing like a Carhartt jacket with like dickies and some bust up converses right and a white t-shirt tucked in and shit he looks like every other kid that you'd see in maybe whatever hipster city you live in right obviously for me it'd be in london and parts of brick lane shoulders and shit he looks like any other kid that you maybe see maybe working in a bar or just walking around the city trying to grab some lunch or some shit right cool good looking guy and also let me think you know what this kid's a multi-millionaire right his dad's recently signed a deal with some Saudi Arabian group, right? You know, obviously put his morals to one side, but he signed some flipping three digit million dollar deal with that people over there. So they're paid for, until the cows go home. He's supposedly some sort of photographer, right? But he's wearing clothes and trying to portray himself to be this kind of working class, you know, uh, normal looking lad, because for whatever reason, that's in vogue at the moment it's similar to like why i hate padded skateboards right these guys that all go around cosplaying like they're working class wearing sovereign rings and loafers with fucking tracksuit bottoms and shit but they're all from fairly well-to-do um families and backgrounds they're not really from ends in any kind of shape or way they talk with a slight it's all kind of really reductive nonsense stuff but it's not just them everyone sort of does that right they all kind of pretend that they're from ends when they're clearly not and they try and portray and kind of you know do this kind of working class cosplay thing because for whatever reason when you're from a privileged background you want to somehow have this kind of like um normalness about you and i guess in some ways either you be normal in terms of the clothes you wear and the people you hang out with or by having some sort of quirky personality or by then you know you know 
basically acting as if because you're lonely and you have any real friends that you've got anxiety and depression similar to people who really do have some real life issues that they can't go through and i just i don't know it's, i just find that sort of stuff really 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 disingenuous don't get me wrong you have your issues but don't try and pretend like your issues are anyway anyway similar to what a regular everyday person's going through because they're clearly not and again that's the whole point of having privilege your point of having privilege is that you don't have to go through those kind of problems and if you do maybe they're different kind of problems but they're not the same do you know what I mean that's just the issue i have with it and again i just think it's so weird they're taking pictures of yourself cr crying and having them on your camera roll like why do you why do you have those pictures who are you sending them to and also a part of me is like but I guess it's girls anyway. They just have pictures of themselves on their. You go to you go on a girls. If you ever have a chance to go on a girls' camera roll, it's fucking mad. You go on a guys' camera roll, it's just full of stuff he's downloaded or screenshots or maybe some selfies of his shoes and beers and shit. Go on a girls' camera roll, it's just like mad pictures of themselves, like mad photo shoots that they kind of do on their own. But I also find it hilarious how the girl that was telling us on Complex what sneaker shopping, telling the lads. You know, you have to wear a certain thing in order to kind of get a chance to holler at her or whatnot. You know, trying to give the whole bad girl sort of like, you know, homeboy sort of bullshit. It's also the same person that's, you know, taking pictures of herself crying into her camera. It's like, mate, you know what I mean? Like, come on, give your head a wobble a little bit. But again, beautiful girl. She was great in clothes and shit, but I, I, I did think this was a little bit ridiculous, like rid incredibly ridiculous. Like, uh, uh, I don't know. Like, imagine having all these pictures on your phone of yourself crying. Like, legitimately going through such a tough moment. Usually, you don't take pictures of yourself anyway when you're going through tough times, right? It's like when you when you get a bit of, when you get a bit of timber on you, when you're a bit of fat, you don't really have that many selfies of yourself because you clearly know you don't look your greatest, right? So you're a bit, you're a bit self conscious. So imagine being, imagine being so self conscious that you know you still look pretty because again there's a part of it that must think wow i still look kind of buff here because she clearly looks fucking hot still do you know what I mean? <laughs> really sad so it's like it's so weird man i just find it insanely weird i really do i just don't know what to say i find it uh, i don't know again it's just me maybe it's just me but i find it fucking like you know the way these wristbands are written i don't know man i just find it strange i just find it strange maybe again i'm being too crass and shit but i just find it very 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 odd